Okay. Results are out this week. Level 1, level 2. That's rare. I've never seen that before. Level 1 was out Tuesday. Level 2 was out Thursday. I was unprepared for that. Uh, typically, you get results uh, for level 1. A week later, you'll get level 2. And then a week to two weeks later, you get level 3. So, okay, bravo, CFAI. Uh, you are leveraging the computer-based testing platform to deliver results at a faster speed. Bravo. Level 3 is still going to take some time because there is still a manual process in grading the structured response questions. Level 1, 39% pass rate. Level 2, 44 down from uh, being the third highest last time at 52%, down to 44%. Level 1 at 39, sub 40%. Uh, so um, let's break this down. Level 1 DNP. I have some options for you here. Uh, level 1 passed and level 2 DNP. You both face the same options. And then we have level 2 that passed. If we start with level 1 DNP, uh, your next exam window is February 2024 from the August window, which is 135 days away. Uh, and then you have May, August, and of course you have November, but I think listing November is a little too far off in the distance. Um, I'll talk about uh, this in a second here. Uh, for uh, level one that has passed and level two that has not passed, uh, May seems like the obvious, uh, the obvious selection. I don't think that there's a lot of thinking involved there. May is enough time away. It's not so short a window as 100 and 35 days. It's enough time away to get it done. Uh, so uh, I think that one is an easy choice. For level two, those that passed, you do have a choice here. February 2024, that's 133 days. There is no May, so it's all the way into August. So there seems one that is maybe too close and one that is maybe too far. There's no middle ground. Um, let's uh, think about... Uh, those that did not pass. So you have level one DNP. You could take February 2024. Level two DNP, you've got May. I think that's the easy, the easy one there. I don't think there's a lot to talk about. This is the one here, 135 days. Is that enough time? The next window you choose should be uh, a function of your score. Uh, in other words, the closer to the minimum passing score, the higher the propensity you should show for choosing uh, the very next exam window, which is February, because you're not starting from scratch. Uh, you don't have to begin all over again. Uh, you just have to give it another go, lean into it a little bit more. But it's you, this pass would be closer to looking like a long review as opposed to learning from the bottom up. That's the closer to the MPS. The further away from the MPS... Uh, well, then the lower the propensity it would be for choosing February, the higher the propensity it would be for choosing May, that if you scored quite a distance from the minimum passing score, then I would say there are some sections, more than likely, in which you are starting from scratch because you were, you were way off. Uh, that's the way I would think about it. So if you, if you were close, go ahead, choose February. If you think, well, it's only 135 days, you're thinking about it more in terms of it's a big enhanced review period. That's a lot of time. And the further away you were, maybe you want to choose uh, longer time. Uh, for uh, level two, uh, that did not pass. Uh, well, you, you can only choose May, which is, which is enough time. Uh, whether, whether you're level one that passed and selecting May or level two that did not pass and can only select May, it is enough time that we don't have to discuss where you were in relation uh, to the minimum score. This one here requires some thought as well. February 2024, if you pass level two and you're thinking about level three, there is no May. May, in my opinion, May would have been the one to choose if you had passed level two uh, and you were thinking about level three because, of course, you have holidays coming up and that always is a drain of time when it comes to friends and family. So May would have been the obvious one. But what do you have? You have February and you have August. And this is going to be your last exam. 
or at least you want it to be your last exam. You don't want it to be your second last exam. So being that it is your last exam, uh, we don't have to worry about lining up this exam to appeal to the next exam window. Maybe you're thinking about August. Uh, I'll give you two ways to think about how you would want to select uh, February or August based on your personal situation. I'm often asked, is this enough time? Well, that's a very specific question asked by an individual. It's not a general question asked by a population. So I can't answer that question in the specific. I can only answer it in the general. So I'll give you some, uh, a general answer. Then I'll give you a general framework in which you can get specific and answer it for yourself. How's that sound? Uh, so select a process window, um, not a time window. A time window is how much time have I got? A process window is this is the way I'm going to study. How much time will it take based on the fact that it's process first, time second? I don't like the idea of counting hours. Saying, well, I studied 300 hours. How come I didn't pass? My uh, answer to that would be, well, let's look at the quality of those hours. There is a difference in, um, in applying yourself for an hour and diving deep on some concepts and simply just watching a video for an hour or, or even worse, having the video play and play, just play while your mind is, is roaming uh, and uh, being under the illusion that you spent an hour of time sitting in one place with this video playing. There's a big difference between uh, those two time periods. So when I say process, this really is about how you prepare. And the process is more important than the amount of time that you spend because with process you have a victory uh, every time. So every time you study, if you follow your process for how you study, you don't have to worry about, well, did I cover 100 pages? Did I cover 20? Did I only cover two? It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter because it's the process that's important, not the amount of time that you spend. So if you uh, feel that, well, listen, I like to learn everything. I like to know everything. I don't like being frustrated. Uh, I like to take my time on this, then uh, select August. If you've always been a very fast learner uh, and finance comes easy to you, you have an undergraduate degree in finance or even a graduate degree in finance, and the topics are things you've seen before and you're a fast learner, well then you're good for February. You're not sacrificing how you would study. You're not sacrificing the process for time. You're not exceeding your brain's speed limit. Another way to think about this is the uh, time you have available to you in the course of a week. And we'll uh, group our activities into three big groups. Um, 168 hours available to you in a week. Uh, the solitary cost of being a human being is about 70 hours a week. What do I mean by the solitary cost? You got to sleep, you got to eat, there's personal hygiene involved, you got to get dressed, you got to eat. Usually it's about 10 hours a day on average spent in just the administration of a solitary life. So really you have about 98 hours a week uh, that you can dedicate to other things. If you have a career, if you work full time, by the time you leave your home to the time you get back to your home on a 40 hour uh, a week career, some are more, some are less. Let's take a midpoint. Let's say it's, that's anywhere from 40 to 60 hours. A midpoint is 50 hours. Then you can adjust this uh, for whatever uh, you feel. You're down to 48 hours. <clears throat> And uh, you have friends, you have family, and you have uh, personal pursuits. You're going to spend time with friends. Uh, you're going to spend time with family. And you have your personal pursuits, such as uh, maybe you go to the gym. Maybe you golf once a week. Maybe you play a pickup game of hockey uh, every Friday night or every Saturday night. Uh, but this is the uh, social cost of being a human. This is the individual or the uh, uh, private cost of being a human, the administration of, a, of an individual life. This is the administration of a social life. Let's say you figure, well, it's about four hours a day. Well, there's 28 hours a week, right? Now you're down to 20 hours. 
uh, well, are you going to spend all those 20 hours on just CFA? So maybe you want to weight it by some kind of productivity factor, let's say 50%. That 50% of that time will be spent to, towards CFA, that's 10 hours a week. You're down to 10 hours a week. If we think about a midpoint in uh, hours of studying, well, let's start with the 300. That's a midpoint, okay? That's the middle of a distribution. If we say a standard deviation of about 50 hours, construct a 90% confidence interval, we're anywhere from 200 to 400 hours. And you've got 10 hours a week. So you're anywhere from uh, 20 weeks to 40 weeks. You're anywhere from five months to 10 months. Now that's a big range. Uh, the uh, less uh, hours you have to spend working, the less hours you spend on uh, your social administration of life, uh, the more hours you have to study. Uh, the higher the proportion of hours that you're going to spend, if you've got 20 hours a week and you say, well, not 10 hours a week, I can spend 12 hours a week, then the less time. But if you have to commute to work and you have a career that's demanding, that's going to require more time. If you have a wife and kids and family, uh, well, you're probably more than four hours a week. That's going to take more time. And if you are uh, slower at learning, uh, than the average. Uh, you know this through your university career based on how long it took you to do something versus other people. You know this. If it takes you a little bit longer on um, sections that have numbers uh, than uh, you would like, well then it's going to take a uh, longer time. Then you'd probably cl be closer to the 400 hour part of the 90 percent confidence interval than the 200 hour part. So this gives you sort of a framework, a general framework in which then you can become, uh, you can get more specific by saying, well, you know, fill in your own hours. I wouldn't change uh, too much over here. Fill in your own hours, figure out how many hours you have and figure out how many weeks you have based on the interval. Uh, if you're average, use the 300. If you learn faster than the average, uh, sorry, faster than the average, you can move down towards the lower part of the uh, interval. And if it takes you a little bit longer, move towards the upper uh, part of the interval. And this will allow you to figure out the last mile of this problem on your own. Somebody says, is 20 hours a week enough for me? Well, I don't know. I don't know enough about you to determine if 20 hours a week is enough for you. I can only answer that in the general way, which is 20 hours a week uh, for four months, for five months, is a good amount of time on average. But I don't know if you have an on average life. I don't know if you have an on average amount of hours available for this. And I don't know if you have an on average uh, capacity to learn new things. Only you know that. So if we start with this sort of broad framework, you can then determine for yourself uh, whether you want to make the next exam window, which is February, or make uh, the run for August. Now, keep in mind the time of year. We have a calendar effect here. If you're going to select February, you have a calendar effect. You have some significant holidays coming up. If you're in the U.S., you have the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, you have the Christmas uh, holiday coming up. And then, of course, you have New Year's coming up all at the same time. Uh, so within this particular window, now till May, you got to get through that seasonal effect, which is usually a heavier burden on the friends and family side of things. So, uh, you know, August, being that this is going to be your last exam and you want to make it your last exam, why take the chance on racing to the finish line for February when August gives you enough time? And if you find that August is too much time, take a month off. You deserve it. You've passed level two. You've done a lot. Level three is, you know, if you've made it past level two, you'll find that level three isn't as cognitively uh, uh, demanding on the quantitative side as level two was. So you can take a little bit of time off and just celebrate your victory for a while. And maybe you want to have a resolution of saying, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start in January. I'm going to make a run for August because I am going to make it my last exam. Okay, hopefully that uh, uh, answered some questions and it uh, helped you structure your thinking in terms of how much time you need.